Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to worship today, this uh, seventh Sunday of Easter, and uh, Eight. also no seventh. There are only seven. It's the seventh Sunday. <laughs> on the uh, answer to on Sunday, on Sunday seasons, it calls it the eighth Sunday. Okay. I guess it depends if it counts Easter. I don't know. Anyway. <laughs> Happy Mother's Day! <laughs> Welcome and happy Mother's Day. <laughs> <clears throat> so, uh, glad to, uh, to have you all with us today and celebrate in all the ways that uh, we are celebrating. Uh, and just good to, uh, to be together and to worship today. Um, let's see, a uh, reminder that there will still be Bible study on Wednesday at 9. Uh, now in the book of Judges, where there are all kinds of interesting stories. Um, and let's see, we have uh, a few announcements of things that uh, we have awareness of. One is that uh, this coming uh, Saturday, um, May 18th, uh, in the evening, uh, time is what? Uh, dinner is 5 to 6. 30, uh, salute to Veterans is at 7. Okay. So at PBL, the Salute to Veterans uh, dinner with 5 to 6.30 and the concert at 7. At, uh, so the PBL, Salute to Veterans, uh, the vet is there. Isaiah uh, has uh, some tickets for that. And I think you could also get in at the door. At the door yep. um, so that will be then. Uh, also, uh, while Priscilla is, uh, is setting up for that on Friday, I'm playing again in Artesia, so someone wants entertainment. To... It's approved. <laughs> but I'm not helping her set up. Uh, and uh, so then also, uh, uh, people in graduation is uh, the following weekend, and, and so next Sunday uh, afternoon, two to four, at Artesia, we're having a graduation party for Isaiah. So I invite everybody um, to, uh, to come by then and, uh, and celebrate that. And, uh, and next Sunday, uh, Pastor Barb um, will be, uh, Priscilla's mom will be preaching that morning. Uh, do we have, are there other announcements uh, in the congregation or the community to share today? Or updates, additions for our prayer list? Sunday school next Sunday. All right. Very good. I wondered why I couldn't find a prayer of the day labeled the eighth Sunday in um, Easter. But I swear Sundays and Seasons said it was the eighth Sunday in Easter. And the last bulletin that I pulled up to edit said it was the sixth Sunday in Easter and it was from two weeks ago. So I don't know. Sarah. Yes, because next Sunday will be Pentecost. Okay. So that for sure I know. So yeah. If anybody would like to help me take down butterflies after church, that'd be awesome. Yes, and next Sunday. I'm really tall because I'm a really tall person. I'll be butterflies. There you go, yeah, for really tall ones. And that also means next Sunday you need to wear red because it's Pentecost. When the flames came down, thank you. All right, uh, any other announcements or updates or computer updates or? I won't get into amusing anecdotes, uh, so those for afterwards. All right, 
And then uh, we'll begin our worship with our brief order for confession and forgiveness. This is found on page 10 in your blue with one voice or on the screen. We worship as we are baptized in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desire is known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sin, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Most merciful God, we confess that we are in bondage to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us. Renew us and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake God forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit.
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Today's first reading comes from Acts, the first chapter. In those days, Peter stood up among the believers. Together, the crowd numbered about 120 persons and said, Friends, 
The scripture had to be fulfilled, which the Holy Spirit through David foretold concerning Judas, who became a guide for those who arrested Jesus. For he was numbered among us and was allotted his share in this ministry. So one of the men who have accompanied us during all the time that the Lord Jesus went in and out among us, beginning from the baptism of John until the day when he was taken up from us, one of these must become a witness with us to his resurrection. So they proposed two. Joseph called Barsabas, who was also known as Justice, and Matthias. Then they prayed and said, Lord, you know everyone's heart. Show us which one of these two you have chosen to take the place in this ministry and apostleship from which Judas turned aside to go to his own place. And they cast lots for them, and the lot fell on Mathis, and he was added to the 11 apostles. The psalm today is Psalm 1. Let's read responsively. Happy are they who have not walked in the counsel of the wicked, nor lingered in the way of sinners, nor sat in the seats of the scornful. They are like trees planted by streams of water, bearing fruit in due season, with leaves that do not wither, everything they do shall prosper. It is not so with the wicked. They are like chaff which the wind blows away. Therefore the wicked shall not stand upright when the judgment comes, nor the sinner in the counsel of the righteous. The second reading for today comes from 1 John 5, verses 9 through 13. If we receive human testimony, the testimony of God is greater, for this is the testimony of God that he has testified to his Son. Those who believe in the Son of God have the testimony in their hearts. Those who do not believe in God have made him a liar by not believing in the testimony that God has given concerning his Son. And this is the testimony. God gave us eternal life, and this life is in his Son. Whoever has the Son has life. Whoever does not have the Son of God does not have life. I write these things to you who believe in the name of the Son of God, so that you may know that you have eternal life. Here ends the second reading. Do I invite kids to come forward for children's message? Good morning. So, have something today? Have you, have you seen one of these? Careful with it because it's a dry one. What, what could you do with that? You could plant it, but it also kind of plants itself, doesn't it? Like, and you know what happens? Have you seen them fall off the trees? Or have you ever thrown them up in the air? Right? So, but you're right. So it's fun. It's, it's like a toy. A little helicopter seed. Right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so they, they fall off like that and, and they can get caught in the wind and, and blown around a little bit. That's a way that a tree can, uh, can get its seeds to spread out uh, a little bit. And, and then there'll be new trees. So, all right. <laughs> My turn. Thank you. So, it's a seed, and it will grow a tree, right? Um, now, uh, what kind of things does the tree need to grow? Water. Water. Yep. And soil. Yep, and soil. 
and sunlight, right? But if it doesn't have all those things, and, and yeah, so if it's you know in the middle of the forest, there are lots of bigger trees that may not grow up and become a big tree if there's not a hole for enough sunlight to get through. Um, but when there is a hole, that's when a new tree comes up through there, uh, when a little tree falls down. Air, it's got. And so water, though, it needs enough water. Um, did you know that if, if you are uh, out in a place where it's kind of dry, there won't, there won't be much water. But if you see something like, like wiggling through the, the landscape, on, if you see like far away um, trees or, or even bushes and kind of winding around, you know what? There's going to be water there, at least sometimes. That's going to be where there's a stream because uh, you see those plants growing where there aren't many others because that stream goes through there or a river. And uh, so you'll almost always find, at least in, in a natural uh, state, you'll find trees growing up near a stream or a river. And it'll grow strong and it'll have good leaves. Okay? And that's the kind of leaf that goes with this with this seed, all right? So the tree that has these leaves is putting out these seeds, so there could be more. But those trees really grow by a river, or by a creek, or by a stream. Um, where my parents live, there's a, there's a stream and all kinds of trees grow up beside it. There's a place, I don't know, have you seen the, uh, the eagle's nest down at the, uh, the park in Champaign County? I know there's another one. They're usually, they're, the eagle's nest is gonna be on a big tree, right? But there's one, there's one at a park, uh, yeah, down there in the, um, at the Middle Fork uh, Preserve, and it's right by a little river there, the Middle Fork Main River, and there's this huge tree that's got this eagle's nest in it. And it makes sense that it's by the river because that tree grew up strong because it's always got water. So, uh, in the psalm that we just said, it says, those who, uh, who, uh, who study and meditate on the word of God are like a tree planted by a stream. A tree planted by a stream is going to be big and strong, right? And have deep roots and it's going to last. We're saying that if you hear God's word for you, that that will help you to be strong and to last. Yeah, like a strong tree. Because the word of God will be like that river. It's always that water that you need to give you. And Jesus says in today's gospel reading, he says that, uh, uh, that he has given God's word to us uh, so that we can know it, so that we can be strong in it. And Jesus, in fact, we say he is God's word to us. He showed us everything. He gave us God's word of love. God's word is that God loves you with an everlasting love and there's nothing that can separate you from the love of God. And that's like that river with that tree growing up strong beside it. So if you remember that you are loved by God, that's that strength, that watering that you need to live. Let's pray together. Afterwards you can have it, okay? Alright. Dear God, thank you that uh, you give us your word to strengthen us your word of love so that we can grow in that, know that, uh, that you are always giving us love and life, that you give it for the sake of the world. Help us to grow up strong and to spread the seeds of your love so that more can grow strong in your love and your word. In Jesus' name, amen.
Holy Gospel according to John, the 17th chapter. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus said, I have made your name known to those whom you gave me from the world. They were yours and you gave them to me, and they have kept your word. Now they know that everything you have given me is from you. For the words that you gave to me, I have given to them. And they have received them and know in truth that I came from you, and they have believed that you sent me. I'm asking on their behalf, I'm not asking on behalf of the world, but on behalf of those you gave me, because they are yours. All mine are yours, and yours are mine, and I have been glorified in them. And now I am no longer in the world, but they are in the world, and I am coming to you. Holy Father, protect them in your name that you have given me. So that, I, so that they may be one as we are one. When I was with them, I protected them in your name that you have given me. I guarded them and not one of them was lost except the one destined to be lost so that scripture might be fulfilled. But now I am coming to you and I speak these things in the world so that they may have my joy made complete in themselves. I have given them your word and the world has hated them because they do not belong to the world just as I do not belong to the world. I'm not asking you to take them out of the world, but I ask you to protect them from the evil one. They do not belong to the world, just as I do not belong to the world. Sanctify them in truth. Your word is truth. As you have sent me into the world, so I have sent them into the world. And for their sakes, I sanctify myself, so they also may be sanctified in truth. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. using a song again this morning. Uh, I forgot to write down <clears throat> who wrote this song, but I did not. But uh, I learned it in the 90s. It's a song. It's uh, based on uh, the, uh, the psalm from today. Today says, Happy are those who have not walked in the counsel of the wicked, those who meditate on your word day and night, for they are like a tree planted by a stream of water. I remember that when this scripture came up nine years ago, it was when we were in Costa Rica, but I was reading this scripture and I was struck by some very giant trees that were growing in really favorable places that we were seeing in the rainforest and the cloud forest. It just struck me and kind of brought this scripture home. How strong your life can be when you're hearing the goodness of God's word. Like a tree planted by a stream, always having what you need for life. Then there's the contrast and the trouble. The opposite is to live by the way of the wicked. And that raises a question of who are the wicked. It's a worthwhile question. If you've seen uh, the musical Wicked or know of that, it uh, raises the question that not all who are considered wicked really are. So it's worth digging into what does it mean? Well, in the Psalms, the wicked are often those who abuse and extort people who don't have things that they need. Powerful people will take from the weak and the poor. 
I think everyone can agree that advancing yourself by taking advantage of others is the height of wickedness. And it also is the way of the world, isn't it? Happy are they who have not walked in the counsel of the wicked, for they are like a tree planted by a stream of water. Lord, I live by your word. Lord, I live by every word from your mouth. And I'm like a tree by a stream. I'm bearing fruit, my leaves are green. All that I do is prospering. Oh Lord, I live by your word. Now in today's gospel, Jesus talks about protecting his followers from the ways of the world. Because the ways of the world can take us away from the new life that Jesus has. Some of the ways of the world are things like amassing wealth. And it's attractive because it can make life easier. But it also has this deceptive promise that this will make you live. But wealth can't make us live forever. You cannot save your own life, either physically or spiritually. Everyone will die and we have no power over it. But the wickedness that people do and allow to happen in order to advance our own wealth, it comes at the cost of knowing what it is to have the gifts of God and the love of other people. There's no amount of security that can ultimately save your life. Well, you might save your life in a moment, in a situation, in a particular time, but not forever. You can have all the weapons, all the strongest army, all the greatest power. But if you live by the sword, if you fight powers of death with powers of death, the only thing that increases is death. Violence always escalate. People excuse doing terrible things in the service of protecting themselves and their loved ones. It said, you become a monster, so the monster will not break you. See, trying to save our own lives, making that the most important thing, putting that at the highest place, is the path to becoming a monster, to losing our humanity. It's a path of wickedness and destruction. Now, it's not to say that there's never a reason to use force in protecting other people, right? It is a hard thing, but the point is that it is not the path of life. A use of force is a temporary and it has to be restrained. And we have to understand the problems that can come from it. We have to understand that we cannot place our trust in force. We cannot place our trust in the protection that we can provide. It is a temporary and a limited thing. And we have to understand the harm that is done. See, the ways of the world to only protect or advance oneself can look like being prosperous. Amassing wealth or protecting yourself looks like success on a surface level. But when it's at the expense of others, it costs integrity, it costs life, it costs humanity. Think of Ebenezer Scrooge amassing wealth for himself and having no relationships with anyone. Now, it doesn't have to be so dramatized. The loss of humanity happens in people's lives when we put ourselves first, when we worship and trust in wealth and protection and security. Happy are those who have not walked in the counsel of the wicked, for they are like a tree planted by a stream of water. Lord, I live by your word. Lord, I live by every word from your mouth. And I'm like a tree by a stream. I'm bearing fruit, my leaves are green. All that I do is prospering. Oh Lord, I live by your word.
contrast to serving ourselves and protecting our own lives, God's word is things like, if you lend money, do so without interest. God's word is things like, feed the hungry, clothe those in need, give shelter to those who don't have it, love one another as I have loved you. God's word is love, it is giving. God's word is that you are loved. God's love is that the world is loved. God loves you as much as the Father loves Jesus. And in this, we have the good news, the word that we don't have to save our own lives. We don't have to live for ourselves. We can live for others because Jesus has lived for us and Jesus gives us life. As we hear in the second lesson, this is the testimony. God gave us eternal life and this life is in his son. Whoever is in the son has life. I'm bearing fruit, my leaves are green. All that I do is prospering. Oh Lord, I live by your word. Now saying, Lord, I live by your word might sound like we're talking about ways that we choose to live being obedient to what God wants. And that is legitimate. Certainly it is good to be obedient to the way that God wants us to take care of one another. We should strive for that. I'm not sure that we can claim it. We should strive for it. But there is a deeper level which we can claim. And the deeper and the more powerful way of understanding that we live by the word of God is that we live because of the word of God. We live because it is God's will. We live because it is God's intention that we should live. Because God's word calls for there to be life. Lord, I live by your word and not by anything else. Not because of anything else, but because you want me to live. Lord, I live by your word. Lord, I live by every word from your mouth. And I'm like a tree by a stream. I'm bearing fruit, my leaves are green. All that I do is prospering. Oh Lord, I live by your word. See, we live because of God's word of creation. We only have life because of that word. We live because of God's sustaining word, God's word of renewal that keeps us alive, that keeps the world around. We live because of God's word of love and forgiveness for us. We live because God's word of life has come to us in human flesh, has lived among us, and has given us God's goodness person of Jesus Christ we have seen the word of God as Jesus says now they know everything that you have given me is from you for the words that you gave to me I have given to them and they have received them and know in truth that I have come from you and they have believed that you sent me Lord, I live by your word. Lord, I live by every word from your mouth. And I am like a tree by a stream. I am bearing fruit, my leaves are green. All that I do is prospering. Oh Lord, I live by your word. Lord, we live by your word and by nothing else. 
we live because of the word of life who is Jesus who has destroyed the powers of death on his cross and who rose to new life so we can trust that evil and wickedness do not have power anymore who died on his cross and rose to new life so that we can trust that we don't need to save our own lives we do not live by our own word because we trust that you are the word of life Lord we live because you made us one with Jesus and you send us out to give life to others as Jesus says in today's gospel as you have sent me into the world so I have sent them into the world Lord we live only by your word Lord I live by your My stream, I'm bearing fruit, my leaves are green, all that I do is prospering. Oh Lord, I live by your word. Lord, we live by your word. We live because you want us and all people to live abundantly and well because we're sharing the blessings of creation and loving one another. Lord, we live by your word. We live because of your word, because your word is love and life and healing. We live because of your love for us and for the world. We live by the power of your word. Lord, I live by your word. like a tree by a stream I'm bearing fruit my leaves are green all that I do is prospering oh Lord I live by your word join me Lord I live by your word Lord I live by every word from your mouth and I'm like a tree by a stream I'm bearing fruit, my leaves are green, all that I do is prospering, oh Lord, I live by your word. Lord, thank you for giving us your word, especially your word made flesh, the life, death, and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen.
confess, confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. You may stand. I believe in God, the Father of the Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right. Now let's pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Lord, we pray for your church. Help us to live by your word, to trust that you give us the strength and your good news to share goodness and life with the world. Lord, in your mercy. We pray, we pray for all who are struggling and suffering this day, for those without enough food or shelter or income or resources for necessities of life. We pray for those who are suffering from violence or oppression. We pray for refugees, those who have been driven from their homes, for those who live in fear. We pray for leaders and people of the world to care about all who suffer and who struggle, to do what is necessary to help them. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for all who need healing as we remember the needs of Irene, Lee, Al, Lisa, Shirley, Julia, Marilyn, Don, Heidi, Bonnie, Tim, Mason, and Dawson, Pat, Gary, Char, Jeff, Mike, Kathy, Kate, Jeff, and Bob, and all for whom we pray. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, we lift before you today all mothers and we celebrate with those who celebrate joyous relationships. We grieve with both mothers and children who grieve. Remember those who would like to be mothers but cannot or have not. And all the ways that our lives are filled with these relationships we lift before you on this day. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, we remember and pray with and for all who grieve. Give them trust and hope in your promise of eternal life. They may look forward to spending life eternal with you and with those they love. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. And to your hands, O oh Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy, through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. 
Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever.